I've never been much of a collector, but I seem to be building up quite a collection of Rui Deng USB power meters. So on the left here we have the UM24, which was standard USB 2 and it could read anywhere between 4.5 volts and 24 volts at up to 3 amps. Not long after this one came out, they uh, replaced it with the UM25. Uh, again, USB 2, 4 to 24 volts this time, but up to 5 amps. And it was more accurate and read to an additional digit. The one I'm missing out of my collection here is the UM34, which was USB 3, 4 to 24 volts, and up to 4 amps. But it had a similar accuracy to the UM24, I guess that's reflected in the model number. So the UM34 was a little bit less accurate, um, but did USB3 things. And now we have this, the TC66 USB-C uh, USB power monitor here, and this one will read from practically zero volts up to 30 volts and uh, it will measure up to five amps as well and it's uh, more or less the same accuracy as the um25 so uh, it's pretty impressive it's obviously of course uh, relatively far a bit smaller than the previous generation of meters as well but uh, yeah the um uh, series well whether that's coming to an end now but this is the TC series and I think the T may stand for trigger. Let me get this seal open. Yeah so they've uh, replaced this uh, little tin with this uh, plastic box here. Still got the foam insert and there's some information there on the back. The uh, TC66. Now I should have mentioned that the UM modules um, had a C variation. So this one, the UM24, could also be a UM24C. And uh, this UM25 is indeed the comms module. It's got an extra uh, few ICs on there, and this will uh, communicate over Bluetooth. Uh, and this one comes with a C variant as well, uh, but this isn't it, is it? No, this is just the TC66, but this will also communicate over micro USB and connect into a computer and uh, will show you the information that it is uh, reading um, on your computer, which is quite nice, isn't it? It's quite a tiny little thing, isn't it? So it's got a male USB C connector on one end and a female on the other. Uh, some protective coatings which may come off in a minute and uh, obviously quite a bit smaller uh, screen than on the previous generation but let's get a power bank and plug it in right i'm going to plug the tc66 into this my favorite power bank this okay zoo um 10 000 milliamp hour um, power bank um, and the reason I'm going to use this is obviously it's got USB-C on it and that's capable of doing various different power delivery uh, outputs um, but it's also got uh, Qualcomm quick charge on there as well uh, micro USB input but also an Apple lightning input which for me is great so it means I can just carry one cable which will charge this power bank and charge my Apple phone so yes this is uh, as I said my favorite power bank. So let's plug in the meter. And uh, there we go. We can see what's on the screen there. Voltage 5.0400. Wow, it's got four decimal places for the voltage. Let me zoom in a bit closer. So here we are then. We've got 5.0371 volts or thereabouts coming out of this power bank no current currently um, we've got the accumulated milliamp hours and milliwatt hours down in the left hand side there we've got the resistance of the load which is obviously fairly infinite at the moment because there's nothing connected and there's also a watts 
meter down here as well, a display of how many watts are going through this meter. Apparently it's 23 degrees here in the shed and that wouldn't surprise me, it's quite warm today. And we're using Data Bank Zero because this can save up to nine different sets of parameters. Now before this uh, power bank switches off because there's no current flowing through it, I'm going to connect a load to the output of the Ruideng meter uh, to make sure it doesn't shut off. So there we are, we can now see that I'm drawing 495 milliamps at 5.018 volts uh, over this connector here and we can see those accumulated milliamp and milliwatt hours and we can also see that uh, 500 milliamps at 5 volts equates to, well, 10 ohms of load, which is 2.477 watts. So we've still got 500 milliamps of current being drawn from my power bank. So let's look at the other pages on this uh, menu system. So um, this is the offline storage interface. So this shows the information from the various different data banks, I believe. Um, perhaps we'll look again at that later. The next one shows the fast charge identification. So this is showing that, well, we're getting a fast charge at 2.4 amp, the Apple type charge, because the D plus and D minus pins are both sat at 2.6 volts currently. Uh, the next page shows the protocol detection. Is this just a list of the different types of protocols uh, that can be detected? Uh, perhaps it is. The next one is the interesting one for me. Protocol trigger. This should be able to trigger Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0, 3.0, uh, Huawei, FCP and SCP, um, and also the Samsung AFC and the Type-C power delivery. We'll take another look at that in a bit. Press and hold the right-hand button, get out of that menu. Um, and then we've got the settings menu, which is, well, probably fairly dull, although um, changing the uh, backlight level and the timeout is probably quite useful. Um, is that it? No, that's the Bluetooth Connect there. So, ah, there's more. The uh, display rotate, CC pin pull. Oh, there's more in here than I imagined. System language is in English. We'll leave that where it is. Thank you very much. Uh, backlight delay. Is that the the setting that I want to ch increase? No, I've come out of there. Um, so we're in the next menu here, which is just the system information and uh, the firmware version and i believe you can update the firmware on this particular version over the uh, micro usb connector um, and probably over bluetooth as well finally we have a more simple interface here showing the voltage the current and the uh, the watts going through the meter and also you'll notice there is an arrow here at the end which is showing that the power is coming from the power bank and going through to my load now that makes perfect sense of course uh, but this meter can be used in both ways so that arrow can switch if the power is being delivered by this uh, device on this side and going into the other one in fact let's give that a go so as i mentioned this truly is my favorite power bank so much so i've actually got two of these i uh, don't know why the writing's on a different way up not that that matters, uh, but these are two identical power banks other than the uh, silk screen on there. And uh, But you'll notice that this top one is fully charged and the bottom one is, well, about half charged uh, because I've been using it. And I've got a USB-C to C cable here and I'm interested to find out that if this is the power bank with the most charge in it, well, will it deliver the charge when I connect them over USB-C. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. So the two are connected and uh, we are. That's very interesting. Look at this. We've got five volts showing and some current is flowing, but that arrow is flipping backwards and forwards. We seem to be in some ridiculous position here 
where these two power banks are going from charging to being charged. That's not what I expected. I mean, nothing's gone bang, and that's great. But clearly, we can see from that arrow that the charge is going one way and then it's going the other. And, uh, yeah, that's just going to waste an awful lot of energy, isn't it? And not actually achieve anything. And it's a repeatable issue. There we are again on this different screen now, the main screen. Power is going one way and then the other. As these two power banks try and negotiate? I don't know. Anyway, it's not working, is it? It's not happy at all. Uh, to prove the point, though, that this uh, meter is bi-directional, I've now connected a uh, charger to this side of it, and we can see the arrow is pointing towards the power bank, and, uh, yeah, this uh, charger has negotiated a uh, power delivery, 8.78 uh, volts at 1.54 amps, or uh, that's 13.5 watts now going into... Uh, this power bank and if I press these buttons and we go into here we can see we've got DCP 1.5 amps detected there so yeah it's certainly detecting another standard um, as power goes back into that power bank so let's have another go with this protocol trigger shall we which uh, I think is the most interesting part so you seem to press and hold the right hand button to uh, go into the menu let's choose quick charge 3.0 but then it's the left button to go into that section of the menu bit confusing then if we press the left button we highlight minus two uh, 0 0.2 volts and then if we press that one uh, we can up there we go so as we press the right button, the voltage in the top right hand corner is increasing by 0.2 volts, just as in the standard of QC 3.0. So that seems to be working quite nicely. We've got up to 9 volts there. Uh, to come out, press and hold the right button, and then we can change again to a different protocol. So let's go and try... The power delivery, press and hold. No, that was the wrong option. Go back, press and hold the right option to go into that menu. Select the one you want. Then press the left hand button. Please reinsert. So please reinsert. We're now on the power delivery menu. And in the power delivery menu, we can see it can choose 5 volts, 2 amps, 9 volts, 2 amps. This is quite small. And 12 volts, 1.5 amps. So how do we go through here? So let's choose 9 volts, 2 amps. Is it the left-hand button again? No, that is changing straight away, isn't it? So, and 12 volts. Great. How do we get to this? Gear, 1 volt, 100 millivolts, 20 millivolts. I don't know. That's come out again. Let's go back in. Oh, this is quite a confusing control method. Or it's confusing for me, at least. On the unit itself, there are those two buttons on the top which go through the menu. But there's also two switches. This left-hand switch um, forces the uh, TC66 to take its power from the micro USB rather than the device that is under test and the one on the right turns on and off that that trigger mode um, if it's in off it's no longer a trigger I guess it's sort of invisible to uh, the devices on either side uh, with that turned on well it becomes a trigger again you can use the trigger mode so that's uh, yeah that's what they're for so there we have the Rui Deng TC66 USB-C power meter. And as a power meter, well, it seems pretty good. And I'm sure it's as accurate as they claim. All the other devices have been beforehand. 
the fact that it can trigger Qualcomm and power delivery protocols, that's really useful. Although I have to say the menu system for it seems a bit difficult and overcomplicated. USB-C is obviously becoming the norm on many mobile devices so I'm sure this will come in handy in the future but for this test at least I have had to buy a couple of accessories to be able to you know plug it into my loads and that sort of thing but that's it for now hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up subscribe down below comment if you can and I will see you next time thanks for watching